calling from San Jose, California. Ladies and gentlemen, on the line, I have Reese Loke. What up, Reese Loke? Hey, what's going on? What's happening? What's happening? Yeah, thanks for joining the show, man. All day. It's all good. Yeah, huh? yeah. So uh, let's jump right into it, man. Let's take it all the way back. You grew up in Compton. I was born in Compton, born in Compton. California. I was born in Compton, so uh, I stayed there for a little bit. But I, at a young age, I, I went up north to uh, East San Jose. But uh, all my life, I've been back and forth. Oh, okay, so Compton is like your second home then. Yeah. Okay, well, shit, I, I, I'm, I'm curious to know what San Jose was like. What year did you move up there? Man, in the 70s. Oh, I was shit. there in the okay. 70s, man. Well, so I was go. real right. young. Let's go. Let's talk the 80s. I mean, it was popping in in L.A. Uh, with the, the crack and, and, and gang life, and it was just at an all-time high in the 80s. Uh, in the right. early 90s, was San Jose experiencing the same thing? Uh, you know what? I, I, I've been uh, recently blessed to talk to one of uh, one of the uh, triple OGs out of San Ho, uh, Big Red from SJ Riffs, and he's been really uh, sitting me down and schooling me on the, on the history of uh, how how the things in East San Jose got started and whatnot. So you know, I'm I'm just uh, like a sponge and just soaking things up when he speaks. You know, we gotta we gotta give our you know the props and the respect to the people that came before us doing what we do now because had they not been there. We wouldn't have it how we have it now. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's true. What are some so, of the things OG sharing with you? He was just showing, you know, telling me how things got started, and um, you know, he he came to uh to San Jose in '75, from what he told me, and you know, he he was just you know some gangster shit, man. They you know he was over there in East San, East San Jose, where you know where I'm from, mm -hmm. um, and he started up their little clique and whatnot, and they was doing their things as time progressed. You know, I'm not going to go all deep into what he was saying, but as time progressed, you know, in the uh, the 80s, mid 80s and uh, the early 80s to the mid 80s and, to, and on to the 90s, you start to have my generation come through. You know, I'm a, I'm 45 this year. So my generation, I was a teenager in uh, the late 80s, and the early 90s. So we was running around then. Uh, San Jose is a. Is a is geographically in the Bay Area, mm -hmm. uh, but street wise and street politic wise, uh, my generation of, of San Jose people, we don't consider ourselves the Bay Area. It's always been a a, a, a point of friction, really, okay. uh, because uh, you know, and, and a lot of people don't want to admit to this, but m like I said, my generation to tell you tell you from the from the get go, I'm, we're not from the Bay Area. We're from San Ho, straight up. Mm -hmm. And it's been a situation as far as uh, if you look at like the Bay Area cities, Oakland, Frisco, uh, Vallejo, you know, they was more on that pimp shit and that player shit. They mm -hmm. popping their collars and doing all that. In San Jose, we had Crips, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Crips. And we had some 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 dudes that thought they was bloods or whatnot or they was doing their thing. But we had Crips. And, and when you talk to somebody from the uh, geographical Bay Area, They'll sit there and tell you, well, you know, this ain't L.A. and this ain't this and this ain't that. And then what's the Bay? And I, I seen an interview a couple of weeks ago with Spice One. He was sitting there saying, uh, ain't no Crips and no Bloods in Northern California in the Bay Area. And I was like, check this out, homie. Uh, if you got Crips and Bloods in fucking New York, you got them in Denmark, you got them mm -hmm. in Germany, Japan. Oh, yeah. How do you not think that they in the same state fucking 300 miles away exactly. from Los Angeles? Yeah, I mean, we can stocked in Sacramento. I mean, we talked to right. many. I mean, we got X-rated. We got, I mean, we got right. Garden Block up there. I mean, come on now. Right. So I, all that, that myth that it is the uh, the homies are not out here in the, in the in the Bay Area and San Jose and Frisco, Oakland. You know, it might not be no no uh, uh, specific Crip gang or Blood gang right there in the middle of Oakland or, or or San Francisco. But oh, I mean, shit. If I step in San Francisco, there's a Crip there. You know oh, what I yeah. mean? Yeah. There's nowhere you it's can't that, go. It's that aren't. simple. So yeah, that yeah. It, it it was uh San Jose was uh growing up it was real diverse. Um, you know, we was just pushing that East San Jose, man, and, and you know, we, we sharks. We, we do the shark thing out there, yeah. chilling black. Okay. Well, shit, let's talk about your hood specifically. What's the what's the name of your, your neighborhood? I'm from uh, Checkers Drive. It's an apartment complex on uh, McKee and King Road uh, named El Rancho Verde Apartments. Okay. Uh, that, means a, that means a green ranch in Spanish. Okay. And so El Rancho Verde, go ahead. No, no, you please. Rancho Verde Apartments, uh, 
the older homies, uh, they had a clique called the Swamp Dogs, uh, OG Swamp Dogs, and that's the whole history in itself. But out of that, I, I look at it as like an umbrella, you know what I mean? Under the uh, Rancho Verde umbrella, you had different cliques like uh, the Swamp Dogs, uh, V-Town. You, I think they used to have a little clique called uh, East Side Villains up out of there. And you had where I was from, from Checker Drive, which is actual El Rancho Verde apartments, Checkers Drive, and then where the Swamp Dogs were, they're on El Rancho Verde Drive and the Casa Verde condominiums and apartments. So, you know, we was all out there at, during the, uh, during my time on the, on the streets in the 90s uh, dealing with that. You know, it, it was the different cliques all under that umbrella. A lot of us didn't get along. You know, some friction here and there. But now today here in uh, 2020, you know, it's, it's all love. We all one big family and it's it's east side or nothing, four away, all day. Yeah, that's that's good to know. Um, so what when did you necessarily get put on? What year was you talking? I you know what? W- with us, you know, uh it's not a it's not really a put on thing, you know. You you got certain neighborhoods and, and, and certain certain blocks and whatnot that have uh that be jumping motherfuckers in, they walk in the line. But some spots, and, and I've seen this, because like I said, I'm back and forth from Southern California to uh, Northern California. Some spots is just you there. You there. Everybody know you from there. And we're going, we're going, when we leave and go, go out this area, we represent this neighborhood. So you kind of, you kind of bred in, born into it. It's automatic. You know what I mean? You know, we, we from this side of the street and that's it. It's not, it, we don't have to, try to beat you up and say okay now you're from here no we here for because shit my mama live here yeah my cousin stay right there we we, I, we everybody knows each other's families and mo- mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers so we all come from this area so there's no need for me to sock you in your face and say oh you from here too mm-hmm. yeah after we just got them playing football on the street right like come on now. right <laughs> um uh so talk to me about the years that you were the most active what 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 like years would you say most active as far as being uh just you know full in just dealing with it, being in the streets yeah. i will say uh i i started my uh my career and really put myself out there probably like i'm gonna say uh 89 90 mm-hmm. to, and I'll, I'll say i had a good run from like a good 1990 to uh i'll say 96. Mm-hmm. i mean just really being out there and and, and selling dope, you know, uh, uh, selling cocaine, crack cocaine. When I first started, you could you could like really sell out of a sack, come out your pocket out of a sack, and like like how uh, Doughboy did it in Boys in the Hood. He came out of his pocket with the shit. Yeah. <laughs> and then you know I went to jail, and then you know you come out, you had to do some old uh, individual rap the, the dope up, and you know spit it on the ground or whatnot. But back in the day, you used to be able just to just come out your pocket with the shit. So. And, you know, I think that we had a point to prove back then. And, uh, uh, well, my generation, Jill, we had the older homies. But when I was about 16, 17, I must have shit. When I was about 15, 16, I wanted – my main thing was to be one of the hardest crips in San Jose. My main thing was to put it down for East San Jose. My main thing was to, to you know, you want to get your reputation out there. You want to get known and, and do what you have to do to motherfucking put your name and your, your city on the map. And that's what we did, me and my homeboy – uh Big KDZ, K Dog, and uh, the homie Yellow Boy, and a couple other homies, man, we, we pushed a real hard line. Mm-hmm. Okay. Who are some of the gangs that you guys are surrounded by or that are in your general area? Oh, by around Traverti. It's a lot of, you know, we're in Northern California, so it's a lot of Northerners. Okay. Uh, Northeños was right there. So we had a uh, shout out to my boy Stranger. We have Barrio Lockridge locals right there. We Capitol Park. I, I got a lot of. Um, Pontus from Capitol Park, Colonial Mata Via, CMV, Jackson Kings. Uh, right there in that area, we were predominantly the main black gang in that area. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Right right there. You know, they had different little other people around, but they, you know, King, uh, King Road, all the way down the key to Jackson, to Mayberry, and all the way to Allen Rock, that's the around Traverty neighborhood. And it, and it is what it is. Now, around the city, in, in East San Jose, you had uh, different, you know, cliques. You had Family Crip, you had SOS, uh, the Sons of Samoa, they was there. Comar Crips, uh, 
Foxdale. Uh, we had some dudes. They was, I guess, they're bloods now, or or they were bloods back then. Who knows? But there was MP Hood over by the Mount Pleasant area. Uh, had a lot of different, you know, people out there. But uh, okay. predominantly on the east side, you had the Samoans over there by Overfeld. You had uh, Rancho Verde where we at. How does the whole Norteño Sereno thing work out up there? Are there Sereños up there? Yeah, yeah, they have uh, uh, Southerners in Northern California. Uh, how they get down and what they do, their politics, you know, they on the, a whole other level of stuff. Uh, uh, from what I know, it started off in the prison system and, you know, some, some you know, this is the same old story that they have and you study on. Mm -hmm. But uh, there are Southerners in San Jose and in Sacramento and Stockton, all, well, all through Northern California. Mm -hmm. You know, I, don't, I think the same dynamic uh, is going on uh, with the Southerners being out here uh, when it comes to dealing with a Southerner that's straight from Florencia or, or he say you're from Long Beach from East side or West side Longo, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They probably, those, those ones that's in, in down South in LA probably look at the ones up here. as not may, maybe not being real authentic or not being the real ones, but shit, these motherfuckers out here putting it down. So, so don't never get it twisted and yeah. say just because the motherfuckers in the, the other area, mm -hmm. they not putting it down, especially if they, they, California bred this this yeah. lifestyle. Yeah, you know what I mean? They're probably outnumbered, so they have to be a little more crazy. From what I'm, they got to be a little bit more. You know, because yeah. this is the North stronghold. Yeah. You know, I I can understand we can look at people from other states and whatnot. Maybe, but we in California, man, they pushing the line. Northern California is pushing the line, and Southern California pushing the line. Period. You know what? That's so interesting to me because I know down here we don't we don't have a lot of Northern Norteños. I don't. I don't no, oh, I know, right? I know. I, I see a couple. I see some of the some ones I know that are up here. They go down to L.A. with their family for uh, Disneyland or wherever. And they go do their thing. They, I seen one. He took a picture in front of the Echo Park sign or over there by downtown. And you know, uh, right, and, you know. He, the funny he, thing is, Echo Park is all white now. So. I, I'm known as gentrified. I, yeah. I, I know this. You know what I mean? But he took the picture and he, he posted funny. it up, and you know, you hella southerners from down there, like yeah. you know. Yeah, for, but, the Takashi six nine on him, huh? Right, right, <laughs> man. You know, if you a bit, if you really about that life, and I'm not, it's not no shade on dude, because that's my dude. But if you really about that life, we ain't gotta try to prove no points, man. If you there, you there. Yeah, you know, right. we ain't gotta take no pictures, man. I, I'm there. This is what I am. That's why I be saying I'm in Sacramento. Sacramento is like a blood capital of the Northern California. Mm. It's like a San Diego. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. And I got all these 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 crib tattoos and, and shit spelled with double C's and you get a hundred and uh, five degrees out here in the summer. I don't I don't put on a long sleeve, man. It's fucking that's who I am and that's what I'm at. That's what I represent. I just gotta go with the blows and whatever come my way, come my way. You know what I mean? Well shit, let's talk a little bit of a little bit of rap, a little bit of hip hop um, for a minute. Sure. Specifically a few stories. Uh, New York Crip rapper Pop Smoke was recently murdered in Los Angeles, as I'm sure you're aware. Um, yes. What are your thoughts on the whole checking in theory and how rappers, especially rappers with ties to gangs, should move when visiting other cities? I think uh, specifically on that, I, I think the the language being used uh, turns people off as far as somebody telling another grown ass man that you got to check in before you can make moves. I, I I think that's the wrong type of language to use. I think that, you know, just being a uh, uh, cordial and, and being able to move around somewhere. I, I think if you go to another city, you should, you should be able to hit somebody in that city and say, hey, man, I'm out here, man. What's happening? What's up for tonight? Let's do it. That something like that. Not no, I can I move and can I do this? Hey, fuck all that check in shit. Go, go wherever you got to go get your money. But at the same time, I, I was looking at some stuff on, on dude, you, you can't do that, man. It's a lot of people. It's the difference between the haves and the have-nots. And a lot of people, uh, jealousy is a disease. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If you sitting here flossing money and I'm having it like that, I'm I'm in your city doing it how the fuck I want to do it. And yep. You putting your address on shit. You know what I mean? You can't do that, man, because it, it's, it's some wolves out here that'll do shit to you, man. Yep. And, and anybody that know anything about Los Angeles, shit. Yeah, man, shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Born and raised sitting in East LA right yeah, now. Shit. You know about LA? These motherfuckers, some 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 
some wolves out there, and 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 it's not it's not to be played with, homie. To the point, I went out to you know my family's from Compton, and I'm, they they were in Compton for about forty some years. They they're in Long Beach now, over there by uh, Long Beach State. Okay. Uh, nice shit. area. Moved on up. Yeah, yeah, they in a nice area. Yeah, buddy. And I, I, I went out there. I was in Compton one year with, with one of my uh, my daughter's mother, and uh, we stopped. We was on Rosecrans over there by Campanella Park. My family's from Campanella Park, Five Roofs. Okay. So uh, we stop at the gas station. I'm getting some gas, and she smokes. I said, "Hey, we we here in Southern California. This is not Sacramento. <laughs> this mm-hmm. is not San Jose." Yeah. I said, if you got to smoke, so don't, you don't need to get out the car and smoke, man. Let's yeah, get the let's gas and get up out of here. <laughs> man, I'm putting gas in the car. She jumps out the car, walks over mm-hmm. to the corner, lights mm-hmm. up and smoking. Just seeing a carload of dudes pull up. They trying yeah. to sell some incense or some shit. Then they look at her and then they look at me and they see my arms are all tattooed uh, up. Uh, it almost went down. I'm like, man, you can't do this. This yeah. is a different mentality out here. You got to literally, when you go, when I'm on five going south, I literally got to put on my my my, my LA cap mm-hmm. and like I got to be really responsible and really uh, aware of my surroundings because you, you know how it is. Yeah, yeah, and it's nothing about being scared. It's about respect and it's about just being cautious and smart, dude. It, it it's really about being smart. Period. Real talk. So yeah. that check in shit. I think just just keeping a good neighbor policy. Mm-hmm. When That's, you come into yeah. town, just hey hey man, what's up? Well, if you know Snoop. Hey, make Snoop. Who I'm out here doing a show, man. Come, come, smoke on with your boy, man. Mm-hmm. So, motherfucker, say, uh, you know, my, that's my, that's my boy. He's here, and you know, he's, that's my dude. And you have smooth sailing, just like if you went to New York, man. You got some people out there. Check in with them. Hey, what's happening for him out here? Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's done deal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which you know, speaking of New York, what are your general thoughts of how um, New York and other areas around the country? do the ride the five thing ride the six slime you know the folk I, with gds and things i um it's, it's amazing to me that the the culture that came out of california has touched so many people and has influenced so many people worldwide um i was just, my first time in new york was just this past january i was there uh for about four or five days just walking around and just trying to soak the city up and look at different things. But uh, it's, it's if you listen to them when they talk about um, Crips and Bloods and, or what they are, they they, they say it like it's, uh, like it's some clothing. Like, like I'm, I'm Crip. I'm Blood. It's no, it's, we're out here. I'm saying I am a Crip. I'm not, I'm Crip. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but that's how they talk out there. I'm, yeah. I'm Crip. Mm-hmm. Well, he was never Crip. He, you know, no, nah, we, we, put, we put, man, this uh, is a lifestyle. Kind of yeah. Yeah, this is a lifestyle. That's why it was so detrimental when uh um I think a, a while back when Cardi B said that shit she said about not wearing some flu. Mm-hmm. You know that 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 culture is new to y'all. You sitting here talking about you not wearing flu, that's going to hit harder here in California because you got motherfuckers that's in the late 60s that was crips mm. Mm. <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah, speak on. late 60s that were crips and so you saying your ogs out there in new york might be the oldest one might be 40 something maybe yeah but these dudes out here man these motherfuckers came these crips and these dumbos came around in 69 to 72 and you got these older men that live this life seeing people die and, and, and been to jail serve time for this lifestyle that we live and you gonna have some some fucking 25 year old young girl that really don't know what she's talking about talking about some flu shit and even if she was a, a crip and she said dead or whatever federated or whatnot you still disrespecting because a lot of our people share blood over this shit yeah, damn. and that, that's that's how you got to look at that so yeah. you can't that's why it was it was so disrespectful yeah, yeah, you say you say that out there, but it's disrespectful out here when you say that because so many good good men and women died over Crips and Bloods. You know what I mean? Yeah. What are your thoughts in general? Just the whole general situation now that hindsight is twenty twenty, and you got you get to see everything play at hand. What are your thoughts on Takashi Six Nine? You know what, homie? Because you gotta. It's like uh. You got to be real with yourself, homie. 
not everybody is cut out to do certain shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you if you not that, and, and it's not it, it's it's not a knock on you to tell a tell that person or somebody to let you know is, bro, you not this is not your this is not your lane. You you out of your league right here. You know what I mean? And that's not calling you no punk, because I know I know a lot of dudes that'll beat your ass or, or do something to you, and they motherfucking work every day and take care of children, you know, mm-hmm. and cooking, you know what I'm saying? But they just not game bangers. They're not dope dealers or whatnot. So it, it's funny, I because I, I talk to the youth and I mentor youth out here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Okay. And uh, and uh, I know this one youngster. He he was thought he was a little uh, gamu. And I would tell him, and he was really smart and articulate and, and, and had a lot of charisma. I said, bro, I can look at you and see that you're not really about that. You're trying to find an identity for yourself. And I can look at you and tell by how you look at me and, and, and your your whole presence is you ain't with that life for real. Mm-hmm. And I told him, I said, you're going to keep playing around with that. You're going to run into a youngster around your age that's going to gonna mistake how you look because you got all little tattoos you you notice that they won't never get no game tattoos it'll be like music notes and, <laughs> and prayer hands you know what i mean different shit ain't no, yeah. no, no never no neighborhoods just some uh-huh. just some shit to make them look like they tatted up uh-huh. from a distance uh-huh. sagging but when you get up close it's their mama's name and the praying hands and hearts yeah. you know what i'm yeah. saying and stars <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But they but they got the look though. They got the long hair braids sagging. They got all these tattoos. I said, you gonna run into a youngster that's really with that shit. He gonna do something to you. the little dude ended up getting killed at a, at a, a little party. They killed him. Mm. Wow. He, he went yeah. to the wrong area, the wrong, wrong area, and motherfucking shot him. Mm. Hey, do me a favor and keep spreading that word because I'm gonna keep it one hundred. When I was younger, I was a little wannabe. Right. And someone just like you, Coach Bob, R. I. P. to him. Co- uh, right. Coach Bob pulled me aside and he literally told me the same thing. He saw me throwing up a C one day and I'm nowhere near right. Crip. I was never Crip. I was not, you right. know, but he saw me throw up a C and I, he started noticing I was going a different way and he was like, hey, dude, you're you're not about that fucking life. Listen to how I talk right now. Right. You know I, you know what I'm saying? Just the way I fucking talk, you can tell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he, he told me the same thing, man, and, and he probably saved my life, dog. He probably saved my That's life. That's so Just keep spreading that word, real talk, man. It, it, it's, 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 you, you know, you got to have tact. Tact means to be able to deliver a message to somebody without offending them. Mm-hmm. So you you got to make sure that when I when I talk to these youngsters like that and I see that they're trying to go that route and I know they're not really with that because I because I tell them in a minute, man. When I was 16 and you're you're 16 now, man, I would have ate you up. The mm-hmm. 16 year olds that was in the 92, 93 would would eat these ones up. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I say. And I'm not, you got to remind them, I'm not calling you a punk. I'm not saying that you're weak. I'm just right. saying, bro, that's that's not your lane, bro. You could do something else, man. You can, you can, you're smart. Use your mind. Join the sure UFC. Could get in the MMA. Yeah, you know yeah. yeah. But, but all, all this, somebody will, somebody will murder you over this stuff, man. Trying to get a name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're right. Your, your, your coach, mm-hmm. dude that, that told you that, man, yeah. man saved your life, man. Yeah, and that's man. exactly how you got to look at it. up people top five mcs or rappers of all time all time and you're in your you're you're your, your top your top five my top my top first you gotta you gotta go with the trinity man that's rock him krs and kane that's the trinity uh, um and so the other two lyrically mm-hmm. uh I can, man, put you on the spot. Huh? I gotta go with I gotta go with Scarface. Scarface gotta oh, be in there. Man, and um, oh, lyrical, just lyrical. I probably have to fuck with. It's out of uh, gotta be Nas. Gotta Dude, be Nas. That's my number one right Nas, there. Nas, Nas, with it, almost tied up with Immortal Technique. Oh, nice. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, so I'm yeah. a student, man. Hey, this rap shit. I tell these young rappers. You got to be a student of the music, man. You got to really know this stuff. That's how you be a more effective and, and, and more uh, 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 groundbreaking artist. Mm-hmm. Because you got to study the art, man. You got to know who Billy Down Productions, Treacherous 3 is, uh, Graham Allen. You got to know these people because you. this all comes down to what we're doing today. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. And, if you, and a lot of them dudes don't know. A lot of the people that 
they they feel that they the ones that the, the little yachties of the world 21 savages they feel that they the one but it was people that came before you that that made this path for you to even be who the fuck you are mm -hmm. just like the crippling blood thing mm -hmm. tell them homie tell them hey um, since, you're, since you're down to kick it for a few minutes can i ask you something else man all day oh, okay cool <laughs> what are how important was this the movie colors to the spread of gangs across the united states I think that uh, the movie Colors gave an insight of what was going on in Southern California to other states. I think that uh, the movie Colors, as far as uh, here in California, it inspired a lot of young people who probably wasn't even thinking about gangs at one time to start to look into them, mm -hmm. uh, to, start to, to start to identify because the gangs have been around, you know, if they, if they've been around since 69 to 72, the beginnings, they, they've been around. I remember being in Compton in the 80s in Campanella Park and we was running from Sherm Heads. I remember the golf hats and everything. And I remember seeing them dudes. And uh, I remember being a young uh, 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 a child with my cousin. We were sitting in the park in Campanella Park with a teenager. The teenager had to be about 15, 16. And, so at the time, me and my cousin probably were about nine, eight, nine. And my cousin was reading some of the graffiti that was on the bench. And my cousin was like, what's this This word, Pyrus? Pyrus? And the, and the teenager said, no, that says Pyru. He, and we was like, what that mean? And he was like, that's where we're at. That's what we are. And he's pointing to him, himself, and to us. We are Pyrus. This is Campanella Park. And just just being that and, and knowing that, so when the movie came out, it reinforced it and, and it and inspired a lot of people to want to be in gangs and whatnot. But in California, the, the gangs, the gang situation, the climate was already here. I think it just uh, it, it planted seeds and it, and it made it sprout quicker than would it would have. Yeah, to where now they're gang banging in the Philippines, New Zealand. So, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, you know that it. It's it's just crazy how how much it's spread, man. Well, um, I know you had you, you do music. So you you still pushing your music? You know what? When the when the money's right, okay. When the money's right, I think the I think right now, homie, the uh, the music game is is uh, saturated. Mm -hmm. It's saturated. I think that um, when I was first doing music and doing albums, we had we had to go to a real studio, and we we were paying in, uh, anywhere between thirty dollars to fifty dollars an hour, mm -hmm. and, and Laying tracks. I remember I, when I first went, it was real to real. And then it was with oh, yeah. the ADATs. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That was my era. But now, uh, now you got motherfuckers in their rooms with a computer and a microphone yep. cranking out five albums a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's saturated, man. And, and, and they making their little fake ass little covers and whatnot and, and releasing shit digital. You know what I mean? So I think it's saturated. I think that everybody wants to be a rapper now. So, so when it used to be just a couple of rappers, I mean, you shit, you from LA? Remember, it was just something like it was Toddy T, yeah. Ice T, mm -hmm. Mix Master Spade. Mm -hmm. You know, now it's motherfucking hundreds yeah, of these motherfuckers. Oh my God, you know dude. what I'm saying? Everybody does music. Yeah, and I and, and it it, it, it kind of soured me to be to doing music because it took away from the the true and real living art form that that does encompass. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause right now, cause you you listen to these motherfuckers, man, and look at their videos. They all pointing at the fake air guns at the camera. They all talking about bitches and money and how they killers. So what they're rapping about in their content in their music, it could just be one one whole big song. We just take their lyrics and put one beat, in, and all these fucking hundred rappers could be one whole big song because they're all talking about the same shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when nine times out of ten, none of them is doing this shit, man. <laughs> That's the fucked up part right there. So I, I that, that's why I had to step away. Um, if there's some money involved and, and they're, uh, hey, Reese, we like you, this and that, uh, why do you get on this? And, you know, I, I don't try to get in, get in people's pockets, but I know if you're trying to make a dollar off me, I mean, I think I should be compensated anyway. Mm -hmm. Yep. But, uh, but uh, fuck it, I, I do something if it's if it's meaningful and if I feel it. But I'm not gonna just gonna rap on anybody's shit. If I think it's whack, I'm gonna tell you, man, it's whack. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it's it's really fabricated, fabricated to the point that uh, you do a song with Snoop Dogg. Now this motherfucker, uh, Snoop gave you a verse that he didn't want to use on his album. He sent it to you on a on a dad. 
you you put it up to your music and you know paid this motherfucking ten racks for the shit. Mm-hmm. People thinking you was in the studio. I'm the type of dude that wanted to be in the studio with you so we can vibe and we can really get a feel for each other. Not I just got your motherfucking verse and we're gonna <laughs> throw it on shit. That's just whack. Yeah. And but but that's how people operate now. And I you know I'm not with that. I'm with yeah. the old school type shit.